Hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Vekush, Monster Killer. Now then, we can see all our dwarves enjoying our nice new meeting hall down in the new fortress deep under the desert. Now that's nice, a bunch of idle workers here just kind of chatting it up, eating some food, drinking some drink. You know, there's not enough of that here in Usheng Vekush. And you know why that is? Because we should be working, you damn lazy dwarves. Come on, let's get to it. We have a lot to do during this episode. The residential quarter is coming right along, but there's still quite a bit to go, honestly. And I would like to finish that up before the end of this episode, but not getting my hopes too high on that. Also, we have to move all this crap out of the old fortress and get a little bit more situated down underneath. We have a nice farm now, a new meeting hall, plenty of storage. So there's really no good excuse to keep all this crap going up here. Oh, and you know something else we really have to attend to this episode is this forgotten beast over here, the giant weevil who's been trapped in these trees. We really have to see if we can get that thing stuck in one of the forgotten beast pens that we have set up. Yeah, and you know, I guess while we have all the dwarves idle sitting in that meeting hall, what the hell, let's have a go at it. Now, if you remember, this creature does have deadly blood, just so you remember. Not too sure what that entails exactly, but remember that forgotten beast from last episode had deadly gas or whatever the hell it was, and that was truly deadly killed the siege breaker and a couple other dwarves as well not good let's hope this blood isn't as bad as that gas huh all right now let's see here first thing i'm going to go down and set the new meeting hall as our burrow so all the dwarves are forced to go there just like that very good go ahead dwarves and they should be making their way there right now i would imagine yep here they come a whole bunch of dwarves come on guys let's go things are about to get pretty dangerous so waste no time please okay looking pretty good here a bit crowded sure but we're not going to have to be locked up here for too long, so no worries. Oh, would you look here? Down in the entrance hall. Last but not least, we have little Venom Blood making his way along the corridor. <laughs> oh my. Five years old now, by the way, and described as being corpulent. You really got to lay off the plump helmets, my man. I care about you. <laughs> Alright, I think we're looking good now. Now we are faced with a, uh, a couple of problems here. Because now we have to send out a miner while also still making sure all the other dwarves stay in here. How to do this? All right, tell you what, I'm just gonna extend this burrow in one long strip out to that place where we're gonna dig away and release the weevil. And hopefully a miner will travel along that narrow path, dig away that little strip, and then return here after it's done. I imagine it should go off without a hitch. Let's see. All right, there we go, I set it up. A nice long, narrow path. And just a quick refresher as to our plan. Here you can see this long corridor stuffed with doors. And it also has a bridge at the end. My idea is to send a miner down there, hack away that one little piece of rock, and then retreat back through these doors, closing them behind him. And then hopefully that weevil will have to destroy every single one to get out. But before it gets out, I can close up this bridge here which is linked up to a lever in the new meeting hall. Now, if everything goes as I have it planned, it should be nice and safe, is what I'm thinking. But I mean, honestly now, how often do things go as planned? This is Dwarf Fortress after all. Well, let's do it. I'm gonna order this one little bit to be dug away, and somebody's on their way. Very good. Oh, would you take a look at this? The dwarf who's headed down? It's Obak the Bat Killer, the queen. Oh man, this might be a horrible thing, or it might be a horribly epic thing. I'm just gonna let it happen. She chose to go out and hack away that last piece of rock. Let's just hope for the best, guys. Oh, and you know what? Now that she went out that back way, I'm gonna lock up these doors right here so that Weevil can't come around through the farm area, just to assure that it comes through that forgotten beast pen. All right, Obak is making her way along this ledge here, heading towards the tunnel, leading down to the Weevil lair, heading down the tunnel, down the stairs. Luck be with you, my queen. She's heading into the final tunnel, through the doors, carving away that last bit. And she's retreating back to the fortress. I'm going to lock up these doors behind her. All right, all these doors are locked. And it looks like the Weevil's already trying to rip down the doors. The game is still paused. I'm going to head down here to the lever room and pull this lever right here. That is not linked up to the bridge that I want it to be linked up to. Hmm, well, that's not tremendous. <laughs> oh my, I do do some silly things here in Dwarf Fortress, don't I? Well, anyways, not a problem. I guess we're only going to have the one go at this, guys. Get ready to pull those levers when that beast is in the pen, huh? All right, yes, the beast looks to be trying to rip these doors down. Not having an easy time at it. Hmm, maybe I can still get that bridge linked up to a lever. What do you say? Probably not, but yeah, what the hell? Let's take a stab at it. Well, it looks like one of the trap makers is headed out to link that thing up. Good luck, buddy. And the queen is well out of harm's way now, so she's safe. Good. Fantastic work, your majesty. Very brave. Yeah, it looks like that beast is still working at that first door. So you know what? I think we have a solid chance of linking that bridge up successfully, actually. Pretty cool. All right, and it looks like in the middle of all this ruckus, the dwarven caravans have arrived. Again, asking if we want to be part of the homeland. Ugh, you know, 
I'm starting to think this is more like these dwarves asking if we'd like to solidify Usheng Bagush as the capital of our civilization. Not that we'd be swearing fealty to some larger power. You know, our shattered civilization is looking for a spot to call its home. Alright, we gotta weave on its way, I gotta make a decision quick. Tell you what, I can scarcely believe this good news. I have some recommendations. Alright, so I agreed to be part of this civilization. And now we gotta choose someone to be baron of our fortress. But who? Hmm. Whole bunch of dwarves to choose from, that's for sure. Who's got a good head on their shoulders, though? Alright, well, you know, I have an idea. This dwarf here, Moses Astral, one of the Larder Lords. She's been with the fortress since, I think, the second episode of this series. So, quite a few years now. And you know, I think she's got a pretty good head on her shoulders. She's also a mother. I think she has uh, maybe four or five children here in the fortress, all born in Usheng Vagush. So that's something right there. You know, I just have a feeling. I think she's going to make a great Baroness. Call me crazy if you like. But Moses, you're our new Baroness. Congratulations. Oh, now the outpost liaison is saying, There is much to share. And information has been added to the Civilization slash World Info tab. Very exciting. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to check in on that right yet. Because we do have a little matter of a forgotten beast over here in the Western Tunnels. Let's take care of that first, huh? Oh, oops, uh, damn it. Just realized a lot of the dwarves are badly dehydrated. <sighs> I guess I'm gonna turn off the burrow for now. It should be fine, I'm hoping. It really looks like this weevil's having a tough time getting through any of these doors. It's still working at that first one. So I'd say we're gonna be safe for a while now. Oh, hey, looking at this lever, looks like it's all linked up now. So let's get that pulled, huh? And there we go. And, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a troll just walked onto that bridge just as soon as it closed. I don't know if you caught that, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it looks like the bastard was completely obliterated too. Well, anyways, looks like this bridge works now. I'm not sure if this weevil's ever gonna get these doors down though, it's still working on the first one. That doesn't really make any sense. Huh. <sighs> well, I'm not too sure what we could do about that. Excuse me? What the hell happened here? Two dwarves, one of the spikes and one of the lovers, both found dead. Both appear in the old fortress level. Why the hell would that be? You know, I just got rid of the old hospital. I wonder if that had anything to do with it. Man, that stinks. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna have to get a hospital back up in place. And we're gonna be using our new crappy dormitory as one. Kind of stinks, but don't really have a choice, I guess. There we go, should be all set. Yeah, man, that stinks. Infection, I suppose? It is odd that they both died at the same exact time. Doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. Oh well. Well, we're still waiting to see if this weevil breaks down any more doors, and I really don't think it's going to. If it does manage to get through here, it's going to take forever anyways. We might have to think up a different idea, which I don't really care for. But damn it, we're going to resolve this situation before the end of this episode. Mark my word. Alright, let's see, we're getting a new fortress situated here. We do have a dormitory slash hospital, even though it's terribly crappy. I'm getting a new trade depot put up. And on top of that, I'm actually working on a new way for the wagons to get down there as well. A long, winding tunnel that will take the wagons far down into the earth. A long way. Yeah, it'll get the job done, but it's going to take quite some time to dig out, I think. But no worries. Now, something we're going to have to do is get all this crap here moved down into the new fortress. Bins, barrels, beds, all of it. And that's going to take some doing, but it's completely fine because we have a ton of idlers at the moment. Might as well put them to some use, huh? And as for a place to put all that crap, um, we don't really have much in the way of storage in the new fortress. So I think I'm just going to pile it all in this hallway for now. At least we'll get a little bit closer to the fortress, you know? There we are, that'll do it. A huge stockpile. And on top of that, I'm going to get rid of that one that's in the old fortress. Good, there you go, dwarves. Get to work, we have a lot of crap to move. But that's okay, because soon our new home shall be here in the new fortress. Usheng Bagush proper. It will be glorious. Oh, and some migrants, fantastic. Welcome to Usheng Bagush. We can certainly use a hand getting the new fortress in order. Welcome aboard. Now get to work. Ooh, bad timing. The Cyclops Melbil Zansangatesk Uzal Ened has come. A giant humanoid monster with a single eye set in its forehead. The second Cyclops to visit Usheng Bagush. Fascinating. Let's take a closer look at this bastard, huh? Her crinkly, straight hair is extremely long. She is tall. Her nose bridges convex. Her nose is hooked. She has a clear voice. Her ears are splayed out. Her head is very short. She has very low cheekbones. Her slightly low eyebrow is quite long. Her hair is quite sparse. Her hair is goldenrod. Her skin is ecru. And her eye is slate gray. So that's interesting. You can see she looks much different than that previous Cyclops. Pretty cool, pretty cool. But still a threatening creature, we can't forget that. 
and that was right after these migrants got to the fortress. And so they're still trying to make their way to safety, and as soon as I unpause the game, the Cyclops is going to come charging in. So then, I will assemble our warriors, still have to replace one of the brass spikes and one of the rough lovers, of course. I'm going to assemble them, eh, right here for now, just in the middle of this courtyard, as per usual. Come on, warriors, let's go. There's a Cyclops on its way. Yeah, coming in quick, too. All right, everyone to safety, come on. Run those stumpy little legs off. And I'm going to send the warriors up to fight the thing. Hopefully they move together. We don't particularly want one of them to get there before the others. All right, Cyclops is moving in closer and closer to the fortress. Here it comes. I imagine the warriors will get there before the civilians. Okay, yep. Bolts flying. The warriors have reached it. It's on the ground, extremely wounded, unconscious even. Did not stand a chance. Not even a problem. Barely even a footnote. Damn thing. And of course the warriors are vomiting all over the place now. Glorious. It looks like the very first hit on the Cyclops did something to its ankle. And then the Cyclops fell over, which is definitely going to hamper its ability to fight back. Yeah, then it went unconscious shortly after. Still though, I am impressed at how long it took to kill the creature after it was unconscious. I mean, come now. Well, good job, warriors. Now get back to work, you bearded bastards, huh? These guys are great, I'll tell you. Whoa, whoa, hold on now. One of the sand blades just went unconscious. Not too sure why. Why the hell would that be, huh? Come on now. Okay, okay, they're back up on their feet. I'm not too sure why that happened right there. But yeah, I was super terrified. I thought for sure that forgotten beast vapor had gotten on her or something. Woo, close call. Oh yes, Usheng Fagush is going to be talked about the world over, I can guarantee it. All the dwarves busily digging away. At great speed too, very efficient dwarves. I like it. Keep up the splendid work. The third level of the residence hall coming right along, completely smooth now. And just getting all that furniture in place. Not too bad. Rooms for 80 dwarves, give or take. Yeah, not too bad at all. Well, here's something fun. Just right here. Looks like one of the war dogs is chasing a Crundle around. Crundles are a very common sight in Dwarf Fortress. So common, in fact, I never even thought to look at one of the little bastards. So what the hell, let's take a look at him. A tiny underground monster with large claws and horns. It walks on two legs and is dangerous when encountered in large numbers which is usually how they appear, giant groups of these things. This particular one is a female, her scales are crimson and her eyes are black, and it looks like she's also on death's door. All kinds of bruises and dents, her head is torn open, not great. Yeah, these little bastards are almost never a threat. Well, let's see how it does, huh? Oh, oh, it's uh, on the ground, unconscious, and dog is just on top of it, ripping at it, I would imagine. Oof, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, little dude. You ain't going nowhere! Um, seems to be leaving now. Where, where'd the dog go? Huh, okay, looks like these creatures are also experts at playing dead. Fascinating. Cowardly little twerp. Well, here's something interesting. Not something I've ever seen before, certainly. We have a strange mood dwarf here in this clothier shop, who just gave birth to a baby. Kind of strange. I've never seen that happen mid-construction of an artifact. Very odd. Well, maybe it's a good sign. An omen, perhaps? I'll view it that way. Oh my god, really? A vile force of darkness has arrived. Such a pain in my ass, I'll tell you. Oh, you goblins. I really didn't want to deal with you guys this episode. Alright, looking like a bunch of goblins, a couple beak dogs, trolls. Fairly standard. Well, something fun is that all these crushing traps are now ready to go this time. That's pretty exciting. I think they're gonna do pretty well, but I guess we'll see. Alright, just got a new burrow set up underground, literally everything underground, just to make sure nobody's hanging around up on the surface. All right, everyone get down here, come on. The goblins have returned. Ugh, but you know, I'm having a really good feeling about those crushing traps this time. Oof, a lot of mounted goblins this time around. In that first siege, there were a ton as well. In that last siege, I, I hardly saw any of them actually, now that I think about it. I don't know if any goblins were mounted actually. Oh, uh, here's that artifact. Let's have a look. Maybe it'll bring good tidings about this coming siege. Sarvesh Atessalon, the gut puller, has created Tolthat Takthat, a pigtail hood. She claims it as a family heirloom, the Raven of Scorn. A pretty cool name. This is a pigtail hood. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushioned slate cabicons and rectangular diorite cabicons, studded with bronze, decorated with beak dog leather, and encircled with bands of pigtail, naked mole dog leather, and pear cut gold opals. It is made from pigtail cloth. On the item is an image of Post Laces the Troll and Edom Basement Fortunes the Dwarf in Gold Opal. The artwork relates to the killing of that troll by that dwarf with a silver spear in Monster Killer in the midwinter of 251. A dwarf killing a troll, huh? I'd say that's a good omen indeed. Yep, I'll take it. Take heart, dwarves. Our victory today is guaranteed. 
And here's a nice little touch, something I've been meaning to do. I'm having a dwarf put the corpse of Koenarathia Sithi over here in this corner. A nice little fireplace. You know. Oh, well, I guess it just melted that pedestal I put it on. Well, no worries. We'll get it in place shortly. Anywho, back up top. Yeah, this here is looking like that first big, ugly siege that we had, where we lost all those dwarves. Yeah, seven and a half pages of invaders. Not splendid. But I'm not too concerned. The dwarves did beautifully during that last siege, and I happen to think they're gonna do another great job this time. I can almost guarantee it, really. Ooh, wasn't paying attention. All right, up here on the surface, looks like one of the goblins is moving in. Unpausing. Yeah, it just kind of stopped there. There's a huge cluster of trolls moving in, headed right for one of the crushing traps. Come on. Oh, there goes one. Let's see. Hey, not so bad. Killed a couple trolls and it slowed up the others. Yeah, it's not so bad at all. As long as it slows them down and gets them to group up a little bit. There's a bunch more moving in now, headed right for this other crushing trap. Man, I wish we can get all these beak dogs under it before it went off. Oh, but there it goes. Nice. <laughs> bunch of idiots. Yeah, a bunch of bewildered trolls and goblins now. And there's this huge mass of beak dogs moving in behind them. Again, I really wish we can get them up there into range of one of the crushing traps, but not getting my hopes too high on that. Ugh, oh, damn it. Kinda looks like I did not link up this crushing trap right outside the entrance. That's a shame. Well, whatever. Alright, we have beak dogs and goblins entering through the main entrance now. Slowly heading down the stairwell. I'm thinking it's gonna take them a bit to get down there, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on the lead goblin, and we'll just kinda watch him progress for now. We can get all the military dwarves assembled pretty quickly, I'm thinking. Oh dear lord. Oh no, oh no, 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 god. That's not great. Alright, so the goblins are moving into the old fortress level now. And they just killed one of Doosome's cows. Oh man, you know, Doosome, I'm so sorry, man. Damn, that stinks. You know, this poor guy doesn't have any family in the fortress. So, I mean, really, that's like he lost a family member. I really do feel for him. Terribly sorry, my friend. Back up here in the old fortress level, it looks like a number of goblins and beak dogs have moved into this level. I don't know what their goal is, raiding our stockpiles seemingly. Bastards. Alright, looks like they're gathering again at the stairwell, heading down perhaps towards the fortress. I'd have to assume as much. Alright, so I suppose now we're going to assemble the squads here in this awful, awful stockpile hallway. Let's go dwarves. This was supposed to be such a peaceful episode too. Just really hoping we don't lose any good dwarves. As in, like, any dwarves. A man can dream, right? Alright, we have goblins moving into the entry hall now. Just a small group. A scouting party, perhaps. I'm gonna turn on the meeting hall burrow now, just to get everyone clustered up in there for safety. And you know, I'm taking a peek up here in the old fortress level. Looks like there still are a good amount of trolls and beak dogs and goblins up here. That might be a very good thing, actually. Get them all spread out, you know? Just gonna lock all these doors here so they can't escape out into the caverns if we do start beating them. The warriors are assembled here. Those patient, stoic warriors. It's beautiful, really. Looks like a couple of these goblins are rounding the corner. They're not gonna be happy campers in a moment. Dead. Not even an issue. Well, I don't see any sign of those other goblins. They must be a ways back. And so I'm just gonna send the warriors out now before they start getting thirsty and try to head back to the fortress. That wouldn't be good. All right, A, B, C, D. Sand blades, brass spikes, griffins of steel, rough lovers. Let's do this shit. Not before we head out. I would like to address the warriors. Again, we are set upon by the Frosty Barbarity. They've come here for one purpose, to destroy us. Do they not realize that they stand no chance against the dwarves of Usheng Vagush? Their bloodthirsty hordes have turned tail and fled before us numerous times now. What makes them think this attempt is going to be any different? Dwarves, my address to you is pointless, because we all know how today will end. The battered and broken goblins will flee once more into the Red Sand Desert. We will show them that they stand no chance against us. Today, goblins, you die. Let's move out. And this time, let's follow... Um, let's follow One Hump, leader of the Rough Lovers. He does now have an iron helmet, iron high boots, and an iron breastplate, as well as his gauntlets and cloak. Just in case you're wondering, a little bit more protected than he was in the past. Oh, and of course, he's also wearing his thong. Of course. Let's do this, dwarves. Here they go, moving out. Down the entry hall. And it looks like they're trying to head out this forgotten beast pen to chase a couple goblins into the caverns. I did order this other bridge to be closed. I don't particularly want them heading out there just yet. Oh, turn around, guys. Turn around. Come on. Alright, that's a bit risky. I canceled that lever being pulled. 
can't have any of the warriors getting crushed in a bridge now, can we? Alright, looks like there's some combat out there. Yeah, a couple of spearmen up on top of the main hall. Fighting. Ooh, bad wound right there. Come on, keep fighting. Alright, these goblins are gone. Man, that was just two goblins. Guys, pull yourselves together, huh? We have so many more to get through. Oh, we have some combat here. One of the rough lovers is beating this crossbowman with his crutch. <laughs> and they died. Fantastic. Alright, following Asmel once more. Who's headed back down into the main hall. Alright, I'm gonna tell you what, Asmel, I'm actually not gonna follow you because you're slow as hell and way behind everyone else. And instead, I'm just gonna follow this guy here. Solon, one of the rough lovers, happens to be leading the pack. Not sure if I feel great about his chances, but I guess we'll see what happens. I really wish you guys would group up a little bit better. Alright, the dwarves are at the stairwell. Things are gonna get ugly in a hurry. Yeah, this lover's moving up. He's currently enraged. Taking some hits, I believe. Seeing some beak dogs, he's on the ground. Other dwarves are moving in now. This guy's enraged, but fairly wounded, I think. The dwarves appear to be moving up this stairwell now. There are a few martial trances going on. Oh, so long the lover was just found dead. Gotta start following someone else. Okay, here we have Monam Rebecca Mush, leader of the Brass Spikes, and who has been leader for quite some time now. She's heading up the stairs. There aren't many dwarves in here right now. I'm hoping for the best for her. Stick together, guys. It's your best chance. The dwarves are trying to move up the stairs. One of the griffins was just found dead. More and more dwarves joining the fray now. Like a condensed beam of dwarven fury heading up the stairwell. Seeing some martial trances out there still. A couple of the sand blades were just found dead. Not stellar news. Come on guys, keep fighting. Push! Keep pushing! Another sand blade was just found dead. There is no stopping now, dwarves. For Usheng Vagush! Fight, damn it! Goblins are dying. A whole bunch of them. But dwarves are too. This is a very ugly battle, guys. The stairs are slick with blood and gore. An endless stream of shrieks and screams echoing. It looks like the dwarves are slamming their way up the stairwell now. One of the crushing traps just went off. To little effect. It appears as if the beak dogs and goblins are trying to escape now. Running back off into the desert. Following Monam once more. Don't let them escape, dwarves. Make them pay. And they will pay. One way or the other. Another trap went off here. Little effect. Following Monam once more. Oh, it looks like Monam's heading back down into the fortress. I'm not too sure why. Alright, breaking away from her. There's still a large number of trolls here in the old fortress level. And I just ordered them to be killed. And uh, following Monam once more. Looks like she's heading up actually killing trolls now. Good, good. Ooh, look at that blood. Yeah, those trolls are paying, that's for sure. Keep fighting, dwarves! Just lost a rough lover. And another. Ugh. This is a rough one. Only a single goblin left. Just wandering around here in the desert. The last invader. The siege is over now. Let's see if the dwarves can catch this bastard before it escapes. And that'll be a no. So be it. Take your stinking rotten life, goblin. Oh boy. I will tell you guys. That was a horrible siege. Turning the burrow off. Back to work, everyone. In stark contrast to that last siege, we lost 18 military dwarves today. 18 dwarves. Ugh, oh, yeah, it's real bad. Five of the sand blades, three of the griffins of steel, six of the rough lovers, and four of the brass spikes, including Monam Robekamush, the one I was following at the beginning. Damn, she was a brave dwarf too. Up until now, I didn't spend nearly as much attention on her as she deserved. And on top of that, we also lost Uvash Monam Shemeb, Leech Mace. Which I'm particularly upset about because I was a big fan of her as well. Quite a shame. But even worse than that, Arrowhead fell in that fighting. Yep, old that cost. What rotten luck, huh? I'll tell you, you get to know these dwarves, some of their character starts to come out, and then poof, just like that, they're gone. A damn shame. And once again, our entire military is in tatters. What the hell happened? Was it because of those mounted goblins? Did that really give them that much of an advantage? There were a lot more beak dogs this time around. That could definitely have done it. At this point, Usheng Vagush is looking fairly frail, I'd say. We lost nearly half the military, even worse than that first big, awful siege. We're gonna survive, we're gonna pull through, but damn, just hurts. Well, good news here. Doosum still has one of his cows left, and managed to escape up into the northern cavern, and I locked the door behind it so the goblins couldn't get at it. Again, terribly sorry for your loss, Doosum. 
You know, honestly, I'm not even too sure what I should do at this point. We have a whole bunch of crap here in the fortress to get situated before we can live down here safely. And now we only have half of a military. And the warriors we do have are fairly mm, battle-worn. Yeah, I'm seriously at a loss now. Ugh, not to mention all those heroic dwarves we just lost. Man, oh man, Usheng Vagush is looking pretty rough, huh? As I said last episode, I was fairly optimistic that we'd be able to get everything moved down here into the new fortress. The dwarves would finally have a nice, safe place to call home. Each dwarf could have their own personal home. But now, damn, I just don't know. I was so optimistic at the start of this episode. But now, I'd say Usheng Vagush is in a fairly frail state. Who knows when those goblins are going to show up again? Not to mention forgotten beasts. We had that first actual ugly one pop up last episode. Who can say what other terrors lurk out in those tunnels? Best not to think about it, I suppose. Let's just focus on our work here. I could start working on some sort of a trap. That might be for the best. Or perhaps focus a bit on our military? I don't know. We do have quite a few different options, I guess. Well, one thing's for sure. The dwarves that live here shall not fall. Not to those goblins, and not to those beasts. We will fight till the last dwarf. Nothing will take Usheng Vagush. This is our fortress. We are the killer of monsters. But I just hope, for the sake of these brave dwarves, that that end doesn't come anytime soon. Well, you bearded bastards, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. The finale of Chapter 1 of the Monster Killer series. Now, as I had said last week, next week I do not plan on putting out a video, but the following week will begin Chapter 2, and I'm hoping to do some really interesting things, still mainly focusing on getting the dwarves situated in the new fortress, but then I'd really like to take a closer look at the dwarves. I want to see the crafts that they've been making, the food that they've been eating, the gods that they worship, all that stuff. I want to get a closer look at this entire world. I think that would be pretty cool, and I am super amped up for it. And something else I suppose I should mention is that I have a Patreon. I don't really bring it up that much in these videos, mainly because I don't want to be one of those guys, you know. But if you like this series and enjoy my other videos as well, it might be worth a buck a month. I got some pretty neat stuff up there and I try to keep it fairly busy. Polls and giveaways, that sort of stuff. Behind the scenes artwork, you know. And I'm also extremely proud to announce that I've passed the halfway mark of my goal on there. A goal that, when reached, will allow me to do more videos on YouTube. Which is something I would dearly love to do. I don't know what types of videos necessarily. Probably a mixed bag, not all Dwarf Fortress stuff. I'd really like to do more videos now, but honestly, it's just not feasible. I'd say a conservative estimate is that each of these episodes takes meh, 30 to 35 hours to make. Which yes, I know sounds absolutely asinine, but you gotta think I have to go through, record all the footage, then I have to edit it up, draw all those pictures, roughly 27 to 30 per episode. I then have to do the second edit of the episode, where I do all the camera zooming, add in the music, put the pictures in there, that on top of my day job. Yeah, I really don't have that much time left to make YouTube videos. <laughs> and so yeah. Hitting that goal would mean I get to explore YouTube videos a little bit more, which is a very exciting prospect, because I would really like to see what I can do. You know what? Oh, and you know, if you can't support, that's absolutely fine. Please do not stress about it. Please, I care about you, and it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. But if you can't, maybe you can share these videos with someone you know. Someone outside the Dwarf Fortress circle. We have a very small community here, and I'm looking to branch out. I want to show this game to the world. Because really, you know as well as I do, this game has so much to offer, you know? Anyways, that's enough of my blabbing. And so, you bearded bastards, I really hope you enjoyed watching this first chapter of Monster Killer, and I certainly hope you'll join me next time, here in Usheng Bagush. Monster Killer. And until then, you bearded bastards,